So today we're going to be talking about fragrances and uh, I've got quite a few. Um, I got, yeah, I've got quite a few. Hello everybody, welcome to the Jamaican Me Crazy Show. I'm your host Ray and today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to fragrances, colognes, perfumes, stuff like that. And even with that, it's probably not the way you think. This is Wanted by Night by Azaro. If you, let me see if I can show it to you right here. Can you see it? On the bottle right up there, do you see it? It says, Other Perfume. So this one right here is perfume. And this one, if you look at it, this one will say, EDT. Let me see if you can see it. Can you see it? Right there. Right on the blue electric, you'll see it says oh, the toilet. You see it? So EDT. You notice none of these that I have actually say cologne on it. So you can buy some with the word cologne on it, but let me tell you how it works. It's counterintuitive. You might be thinking that perfume is for women and perfume is kind of a lighter scent and cologne is for men and cologne is a more overpowering, stronger scent. And it's the opposite of that. Cologne is actually the weaker fragrance. It goes something like this. Cologne, then it goes to EDT, which is Eau de Toilette, then it goes to EDP, which is Eau de Parfum, and then it goes to Parfum. So perfume is actually the strongest scent. So there's no real gender assignment to the fragrances. It's just a common misconception that we have. That's number one. All right, now that we've gotten that out of the way, we're going to talk about how I got into fragrances. I used to perform. I used to be a singer. <laughs> I got introduced to fragrances at the duty-free gift shop at some of the hotels there. So I was just, I mean, the show was finished. It was the next morning and I was heading home and I saw this fragrance allure. And I thought it, it blew my mind. I was like, oh my gosh. So you mean if I buy that, I can smell amazing? That's amazing. But guess what? I couldn't afford it. <laughs> That's the issue with, with fragrances, the different price ranges. And trust me, you can get some fragrances for 400 US dollars and above 2000 US dollars. But then people are mad. The ones I buy are usually the ones that we call designer fragrances, And these are about between the 30, 40 to hundred dollar range. But I usually stick to the 30, 40 dollar range, but some of them are really, really good. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Now, before we get into the fragrances, there are some things that you need to know, some terms that you need to be aware of. The first term is performance. Now, that is pretty much self-explanatory. How well a fragrance performs? Does it last very long? How close do you have to be to someone to smell it? We call that, that projection. So maybe you'd be walking by someone and they can smell you from about maybe three, four, five feet away. That's really good projection. Some fragrances, it sits really close to the skin. As you spray it, you can't really smell anything. That's weak projection. We have something called sillage. Sillage to me is how well a, a fragrance fills up a room. Maybe you walk by someone and you have a nice little scent trail. These things are what we, we refer to as the performance of a fragrance. And some fragrances perform really, really well like this one. This is a beast mode fragrance, Versace Eros. I mean, when you wear this, you'll get lots of compliments right away and it lasts all day. They can smell you from far away. This is just an amazing fragrance. In fact, fragrances kind of have personality. This to me is kind of like a, uh, a going out kind of a fragrance, like a clubbing fragrance. If you go to, if you go to the club or if you like to go out in a large area and stuff like that, this, this is really great for that. We also have date fragrances, like for example, this one, I mean, I really, really, <laughs> I really, really love this one. Wanted by Night by Azaro. This is like, I forgot to give this one like a spray because I can't help it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this one, girls are going to love this one. So men, get this if you want to be noticed. It's a nice date fragrance. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm not going to do a review of the fragrances today. Like I said, this is just an introduction. All right, so next we're going to talk about the type of fragrances there are. If you're going to buy fragrances, you need to know what type of fragrance you like. 
me personally, I like what they call freshies or fresh scents. And even that, it has subcategories as well. For example, freshies can be categorized into aquatic scents. For example, Bogari Aqua. If you see Aqua in the name, it's generally speaking, it's an aquatic scent. Right? Bulgari Aqua. Also, you can have, um, I think citrusy scents can also be very fresh. Classic example of that would be like Isimiyaki. That has a fresh citrusy scent that is, it's actually a very classic scent that lasts all day. Like for example, this one that I love very much, I'd say this one is, I'd consider to be a spicy, aromatic scent. But I can detect cinnamon in, in this, but it's not, don't think about like smelling something in the kitchen. It's, it's a sexy, uh, seductive, alluring kind of scent. Well, alrighty, I'm Race Narrator from Farron. Let's go ahead and take a look at this circle chart thingy, real thingy right here. You can see that just as he was talking about, they've got different type of scents that you're gonna have to know. Like we got the fresh scents, we got the woodsy notes, we got the oriental scents, we got the floral scents. Let's take a look at the floral scents first of all. You can see that we've got water, which clearly would be the aquatic scents, like for example, Bulgari Aqua, as he mentioned in the video, or maybe Giorgio Armani Aqua di Gio. You've got the citrus scents, like for example, that Isimiyaki, but the ones that smell really good, I think, are the ones that blend some of these notes together, like you'd have some citrusy scents with the aquatic scents mixed with some floral, mixed with some woodsy, mixed with a little bit of oriental. Those are the fragrances that smell really good, but it's very important for you to know what type of fragrance you like before you start spending your hard-earned cash. But you know what? This list isn't even complete because we haven't we haven't even talked about like the leather fragrances, you know, like what grandpa like, you know, English leather or the gourmand. The gourmand is kind of crazy. You'd actually smell like food. Imagine smelling like a walking, talking, breathing piece of sexy chocolate. Sexy chocolate! Okay, so let's talk about a term called blind buying. Blind buying is maybe you go to a cologne shop or a fragrance shop and you see something that looks kind of cool. Like for example, this one, it looks like the barrel of a gun. You're like, huh, the color that must have shot. But anyway, and you say, oh, maybe it smells really good. And yeah, I, I don't recommend that. Even if someone tells you that something smells amazing, you should smell it first because different fragrances can smell different on different people. It kind of interacts with your body chemistry. This one does really good for me. I, I love it. I like, uh, yeah, I do this all the time, by the way. So when I spray my fragrances, I do like, I'll show you that later on. I'll spray some on and show you how I like to spray it. Fragrances have their own personality, like I was saying before. Some fragrances actually do better in different seasons as well. Like even the same one that I love so much, everyone says this is a fall and a winter fragrance. It's kind of true. Some fall and winter fragrances end up smelling too sweet and clawing. You know, like you, you're thirsty in the hot summer, you drink a glass of lemonade. So maybe winter fragrances would be like drinking the, the, the pure syrup. It's clawing, it's too sweet. That's kind of the effect that it would give you in the summer. Not so much this one though. That's why I prefer to wear this one in the nighttime. It just gives me that sweet, seductive kind of a, a nice smell. All right, so obviously we'd probably want to buy more fragrance that's geared towards the summer for us being in a tropical climate. Get what I'm saying? When you buy fragrances, remember to be aware and be cognizant of the people around you. For example, your date, your significant other, maybe my date, will probably be sensitive to aggressive, powerful smelling scents. So you wouldn't want to wear something that's overpowering. So fragrances can actually give people headaches. And if it's too overpowering, it can make them feel nauseous. For example, if you're in a car and it's all closed up and the AC is in the car, they'll probably be like, Ugh. you'd be like, oh, you smell amazing. And they'd be like, oh, stop. Blah. Yeah, this can really happen. This is, Club de Nuit Intense Man. Can you see it? This is one of my favorites. And this is a very strong scent, but I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. But maybe you'd wanna go lighter on this one, as opposed to this one right here, Salvatore Ferragamo Blue, Aqua Essentiale Blue. This to me is a, 
a lighter blue scent but i like to go heavier on this one and by the way remember i said that fragrances have personality this one kind of is a blue fragrance yes it makes me feel cool so if i'm maybe going out to the beach in the daytime or something in the daytime i'd like to put this one on and it smells amazing and i, I like wearing this one a lot hello are you talking about this thing here yeah? and i'll come back to the part where the picture is shown you yeah? Hey boy, which you give me the English letter you promised me, you know. Are you see a man back me sit me your teeth to your old damn teeth? You know, me, me probably should have put in my teeth before when you do this, I think, you know. Alright, you know, come back, see you know, next week.